you know, are now working at, at Disney. Someone who directed this went went was from Disney and went right back after. So we were lucky to get him. And wow, you could easily pass for Santa. Went out to the West Coast after college, and I ended up getting a job at uh, what was current at the time Lucasfilm Games turned into Lucas Art, starting from floppy disks, and by the time I left, CD-ROMs, and then the internet was this kind of new thing. Do you think that gamers really care about the earn factor? Or- this is a big subject. The bad word, and is definitely inspired by things like Blizzard. It's really always been here, right? Yes, some of them did end up looking like Groot. And then I get a burger. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Decoded by Diverse. I'm your host, Dina Matar, and today we have um, Mike, the founder of Planet Mojo. Um, Mike, welcome to Decoded. We're really excited to have you here. How's everything been? Great. Great to see you. Thanks for inviting me. Excited to be here. Good, good. We're excited to dive into everything that you've been doing. So, you know, we've been doing a lot of these um, episodes with a lot of gamers who are now into the Web3 gaming. So I'm going to I'm gonna ask you probably the same question that I've asked everyone. Um, but how did you start and get yourself from, you know, from the Web2 world? Like, tell us your story. How did you, how did you find your way into Web3 and what inspired you to create Planet Mojo? Sure. How far, how far back do you want me to go? To the, to the beginning? <laughs> to the beginning. To the inception. Um, yeah, I'll just give you a quick rundown of my gaming career. We can start there the, the, before that's that, boring. Um, all right. But yeah, I, um, I, I'm from the U.S. in Boston, and I um, went out to the West Coast after college, and I ended up getting a job at uh, what was current at the time Lucasfilm Games, turned into LucasArts, and worked there for the bulk of the 90s, and that was like an incredible time in games sort of my tenure there was like from you know starting from floppy disks and by the time I left CD-ROMs and then the internet was this kind of new thing you know this is the 90s I'm dating myself but um (laughs) yeah I was always into sort of bleeding edge technology and always gravitated towards that so that's kind of how I got my big start there and started the visual effects department um, worked on a bunch of cool games with some really incredibly talented people that I'm still friends with today and work with today, some of which work on Planet Mojo, actually, uh, Ralph and Jim and some others. But um, yeah, from there, I did a startup with people from ILM. That's kind of what gave me the startup bug, I guess, and learning about that world a little bit. And um, I guess... Somewhere along the lines, we raised some money for another company, Happy Giant. We did a lot in mobile, uh, specifically with augmented reality and virtual reality. Eventually, um, made any a game. We'd know? What's that? Any games we'd know? Um, well, the game maybe on if people have Oculus Quest um, or whatever Meta Quest they call it now. Um, <laughs> it is uh, Sam and Max. This time it's virtual, which has been a pretty popular game and. On, on that and other VR platforms. And yeah, we did have a, a, a game that was Apple's game of the day that was an augmented reality game, got a decent amount of press. Um, it was called Hollow Grid Monster Battle. And we did that with this guy, Phil Tippett, this guy, who is a legendary Academy Award winning uh, visual effects director. And he happened to do a lot of the effects in Star Wars, including the hollow chess scene with, on the Millennium Falcon. So we were as we were playing with augmented reality and photogrammetry with his creatures, his actual real other creatures. We're like, how do we turn this into a game? And that's kind of how that game, Hollow Grid, was actually sort of a precursor to Mojo Melee, what we're making now, which was which was really a best based TCG hybrid. Mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, yeah. Well, we were making sorry. Well, we were making Sam and Max. That's when I caught the bu- the bug of blockchain and. Web three and that rabbit hole is still going, descending, never endingly down. <laughs> I feel like everyone, everyone's been, everyone crosses that road at one one point, and if they don't take it now, they'll take it later. It's fine. It happens. <laughs> and I then, agree. and then, um, yeah. So with 
you're uh, with your experience, obviously in Web two now and and now Web three. Um, everyone's trying this, you know, everyone's following this play and earn trend. Everyone's really trying to make that a huge, you know, it was it was a very big deal. I mean, we've seen it um, with a lot of the Web3 games that have had a lot of success. Coming from the traditional side of things, do you think that gamers really care about the earn factor or do you think it's more about the ownership? I mean, when it comes to the bad sure. word NLPs. This is a big subject. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we never... We never really said play to earn because we were always like suspicious of it or just sort of it didn't feel quite right to me. Um, and I think that's proven out. And it, here's the thing. It's like earning in games is it's really always been here. Right. And it's even if you think about um, video games, you know, currently with esports and tournaments and even things like Magic the Gathering. But even think of something like poker, right? Like there's always a certain percentage of people who are interested in earning, right? And take something like magic or poker. Maybe it's a weird analogy, maybe not. But like people play with their friends, right? For like pennies or very low stakes or, but then there's these giant high stake tournaments, right? So like there's, mm -hmm. there's different aspects to it. Magic is maybe better where you're not playing for money at all, just with your friends. And then you're, sort of people who really are into it. So I think earning is definitely a part of this. It just shouldn't have been the headline, right? Because like when you make it the headline and the focus, it basically destroys the game. And it destroys the game through the economy, the community, the players you're attracting, and what their focus is. Games need to be fun. None of these games would have tournaments or earnings involved if they weren't fun. So you have yeah. to have that in an engaging game that people want to play well, over time. To be fair, I, I I do agree with you, but I feel like for certain for certain um, for certain companies that have like entered that wave and they're really like going for the player, and I feel like the the way that they've I think made a mistake is well they're focusing a lot global, like they really want this to be a global impact, but that model will only really be powerful for like people in the Southeast Asia who would gain US dollar value amounts for, you know, where they live, where that would be a significant amount of money that could actually support them and their families. So I, I do agree with you. I feel like that's definitely, it's not something that could be really like, um, it can't be like adopted math, like to the masses, but some, it could only really work within Southeast Asia. I agree in different economies, but what hasn't really been proven out yet is, is that sustainable, right? Like I know lots of people who ran guilds for Axie and I'm like, you know, what happened to all your, your players and your guild? And literally the quote was, they went back to work, right? Cause that's what this was to them. It was a job. And so it possibly can work, but there has to be like actually probably some push pull from different sides of the world. And, we saw this actually in MMOs. You still see this where 5% of the player base, let's say, are gold farmers. And they're really doing that for the 95% of the base who would rather just pay to advance quicker. And so there was a, a service that they were fulfilling basically for people. And, and it, it, it worked to a certain extent, even though it was kind of illegal and, and shined <laughs> out. But I think that is one of the goals of this space is to sort of find a more legitimate, right? What's the right percentage of that to make that work for, for different levels of economies and people. I mean, you even have this in web three, of course, and something we think about a lot recently is just the web three, web two aspect. And, you know, yeah. people who are really on the web three side really are, a lot of them are here for the speculation and the trading and not so much games. And do you want to shun those people or is there a way to make it all part of the same big economy and have it work? So that's sort yeah. of helpful. That, that makes sense. What are you doing in, on behalf of Planet Mojo? So what what's what's your goal? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a lot coming up. Um, you know, Planet Mojo, our goal is to make an ecosystem of interconnected games. And our first game is Mojo Melee, which I'm a, walking billboard for here and <laughs> it, it's been people have been playing it uh largely in the web3 space in the in the browser so it's very easy accessible you know we even had a pretty big tournament in february 
but now really we're moving into open beta. And that means really starting to test the game, the progression mechanics first in the web, but very shortly after we've already shown this on Twitter to mobile first to Android and then probably iOS as a follow-up. And that's a very big deal for us. And I, you know, we're yeah. sort of talking to a lot of, there's only a few companies really sort of crossing that threshold and sort of bringing their game, you know, to the masses, you know, and I feel like, yeah. like we we're all that's under this sort of small, yeah. what's that? That's a huge market to the mobile gamers. I'm one of yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and certain regions of the world, you know, I was talking with someone from India this morning, like they've sort of just been waiting to work with us. Cause like once it's on mobile, it just opens up this huge new audience and yeah for sure and and will that still have like elements of the like blockchain side of things so well one thing i didn't mention is that you know we want the web and the mobile will be cross play so you can have like one account and play back and forth so the the answer to your question is is really going to be dictated um by what the app store policies allow us to do right <laughs> Okay. And and we're honestly, you know, we just came off of GDC. We're we're actually mm -hmm. meeting with them, and because there's a lot of misinformation out there, and we just are trying to, uh, we want to be in accordance with them, of course, because we feel we feel strongly still mobile is the gateway to the masses for Web three. You know, the the downloadable AAA beautiful games, we love them, but it's a harder distribution path, at least right now without steam, you know, there's limited distribution portals, Apple and Google, you know, I think it's going to be a process, but I think the significant thing is they've, they've opened the door. They've literally put it into their guidelines that this is okay. You just have to do it a certain way. So yeah, as much as we can though, we want to have sort of a parity between the web and mobile versions. Um, so people can play each other, name accounts on the go when they're at home, et cetera. So your NFTs that you guys had, they sold out on Magic Eden in four seconds. So, you know, big shout out to that because that was Thank you. Good. Thanks for Magic um, Eden. And that's <laughs> yeah. um, And you recently announced um, your 3D NFTs. So can you explain what that would mean and... Um, how how that will be a benefit to you know the web two web two gamers? Not that yes. Um, if we want to cue the the three D video, this would be a good time to show it. Yes. Okay, there we go. Oh, magic. <laughs> um, we can show the other one after this. But yeah, this is something we announced a couple of weeks ago. Got a great story from Dean Takahashi on Venture Beat about it, and this is something we've been thinking about for a while, and just for games, you know, I mean. Really, the whole digital world has shifted to 3D, except for NFTs, which sort of harken back yeah. to. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So we, thank you. Yeah. So we wanted our NFTs to, first of all, be fully 3D models of their source files. And that actually has pretty massive implications for user generated content. Cause like we've already seen people take NFTs, like from Splinterlands and other games and make their own tournaments and games. Now we're actually giving people 3D models to mess around with. And we plan over time to lean into that, have like a community sponsored game program where we promote the best games experiences we see people making an SDK where people can really get the full characters. And yeah, this is, this is stage two, which we're going to be releasing in a few months. So this is a system we built, we've actually filed a patent for it. And it's, it's something that, again, just coming from games, like you look at this and it's like, well, duh, of course you want this, but you don't see this in the NFT space currently where things are basically static or maybe you can burn something, but we're going to have NFTs that have underlying immutable properties, but then you can add and customize them and personalize them and sell them as a custom look or keep them or et cetera. And those different elements will have different game properties and um, also opens up tons of brand collab integrations that we're yeah. exploring and excited about. So, yeah, we think that is the next wave. We've heard of other gaming projects or, and we've seen some others that are moving to 3D. So we think this is like the start of yeah. the wave of NFTs, at least for gaming. That looked really good. I also love the little guys. I've always loved like that. Yes. They're always very cute. Um, can you, can you maybe show us, um, 
at like show us the trailer. Maybe Jeremy, now you can go. The other yeah, way, no. now we can go to the actual game. So this is just a little hype trailer from the game. And yeah, our first game, people don't know, it's an auto chess strategy game. Um, it's called Mojo Melee. It's uh, we chose it really to start because we just love the PvP esports nature of it, and we thought we're big fans of the genre. I mentioned that Hollow Grid game we had made, and sort of the genre evolved re more recently in recent years with things like Team Fight Tactics and Dota 2 Underlords. But those games were they really came from PC, they're great games and they're on mobile, but like TFT matches can take 30 minutes to complete. So we always just thought there was a big opportunity for a game like this, just even putting the Web3 aspects aside yeah. on Web2 and mobile. And so that's why we design matches to be five to 10 minutes, quicker experiences. This mm -hmm. is our cinematic trailer you're now going to see. And this is just more about our backstory and lore and narrative, which, um, you know, we put a lot of thought into at the beginning and something we're going to, will evolve over time in this game and various games. And yeah, we just coming from LucasArts of something that's sort of beaten into me and us to good. have a world that had, thank you. Uh, yeah, we, it, we have cute and, and, and we have uh scary. So. <laughs> oh, wow. and they out of the <laughs> oh. Yeah. So, um, no, we're really excited. Sorry. Wait, so, what was like what was like the this look inspired by like this I no, wait, wait. um because i did a lot of yeah i mean we did a lot of exploration and references and we worked with a lot of incredible top concept artists like from I, former ilm people and uh people who you know are now working at, at disney someone who directed this when when was from Disney and went right back after. So we were lucky to get him. And we we tried to come up with something original. I mean, I think we were definitely inspired by things like Blizzard uh, to a certain extent. The Mojos were, you know, I don't know if everyone saw our, our, our April Fool's tweet with with Groot and the Mojo, but um, everyone thinks the, the yeah. Mojo were inspired by Groot, but they were more honestly inspired. And you saw it in that last video of uh, the game Little Big Planet and Sackboy you look at their body shapes and sort of that big head tiny body um we we wanted to create something that was very modular because we knew even the original mojo is just thousands and thousands of different parts that had to go together so yes some of them did end up looking like Groot but there are thousands That's, that it's cute so like what it is you know cute. Groot it's is very you got to see our April Bulls tweet they we had Groot and the mojo battling it was great oh uh... Groot oh, says, I am Groot. And then the mojo's going, I am not Groot. <laughs> That's cute. Um, yeah. Yeah. But it's still nice. Um, but I was going to ask, what what, what did you feel like in terms of, obviously, the last year alone was a huge, like, disaster. But um, over overall, like, in your experience in Web3 compared to Web2, what would you say were the major, like, what was your what were your, the biggest challenges and what were those like what did you find to be the biggest changes like differences well i would say change is constant in this space that's one thing and you, yeah. you heard of, once you realize that and that's why a lot of things we've kept sort of some things very flexible in our plans because we you know for example these these mobile guidelines just trying to understand those and you know, we've built a system in our back end that we put a lot of time into and in our infrastructure to be very flexible, scalable, and importantly, chain agnostic. Um, you know, we're currently on Polygon, if I didn't mention that, and we're huge fans, work very closely with them. But one of the reasons we love Polygon also is because they sort of have that chain agnostic mindset too, and they don't mind if we work with other chains. And that's sort of the vision too with this game and other games is to bring multiple sort of these siloed blockchains together into one game as opposed to having them siloed like that. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question, but yeah, there were so many things that happened, you know, over last year, just with the multiple crashes and sort of the market turning from like crazy, you know, like, is this even reality to, you know, maybe it was sort of a natural reset and, and it's healthy, like some people say for this system. But yeah, I mean, we 
we did our first NFT drop um, of the Mojos, you know, and we sold them for I think a thousand dollars roughly. And there was all kinds of other perks, but like that world is largely gone, you know, like that is very, and we've seen it shift from that to like, you know, race to the bottom, you know, free NFT, yeah. Digi Daigaku, free zero royalties. So yeah, it's like, what's next? But it, it seems like everything is um, over time, like people know, like just the reaction even to the royalties and some of the solutions that are coming up. I think that's, you know, the, the, the boat will level itself uh, over time, we hope. Yeah, that's the, I think everyone has like their theories on that, but I feel like it'll, we, I think it'll come back anyway. You know? Yeah, I mean, we just came out of GDC, Game Developers Conference, and this was first year, everyone came back. And of course, there was so much excitement and buzz about Web3. Um, of course, those were a lot of the events I was attending, but just the 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 feeling I oh there you go you found it um, <laughs> the the feeling I and the energy amongst the Web three gaming companies and partners you could definitely sense it and and even the Web two companies I just feel like a lot of the negativity we sort of saw in the headlines last year from the Web two gaming space mm -hmm. about spaces breaking down you know because it, it it's Yep, at least in my opinion, a lot of that stuff came from sort of they were judging the NFT space, right? Not the Web3 gaming space. Because if you think about it, there weren't really, really many Web3 quality games to judge on. So I think mm -hmm. like it's one thing I'm always saying is like the Web3 gaming space, whatever we want to call ourselves, and we need to sort of have our own rules and agenda or whatever, sort of separate from the NFT space. There's always going to be that venn diagram and crossover but um this space is is going to be more about you know longevity delivering on your promises you know maybe you know even having an actual game you know with your digital collections and nfts as opposed to it just purely being on you know we haven't really entered that era right it's going to be really interesting when now there's fully functioning games and now there's a new collection or a new mint and like how does that work? You know, because it's like it's always been more the reverse. Yeah, no, I think I think that's been a lot of people's issues is like everyone's like selling all these, you know, collectibles, but they haven't launched anything for them yet. And then, you know, they expect people to buy them, but they don't know what they're buying them for. So at that point, like that was a time where people were buying for the hype, you know, so like everyone was buying um, like just buying them just so that obviously with FOMO and all these campaigns that they had um, before there was actually anything where they can be used. So it just kind of sits there. And then now, obviously, the market completely wiped every, everything else. So they, most, of the, most of them lost all, all their value. And then now people still don't know what's going to happen. Like people still don't know, is this game actually going to come out? Am I actually going to be using this collectible somewhere in this game? Like every, like, and I think that's kind of what, the main issue has been for a lot of people. Um, and I think it just makes it a lot more difficult for people because the thing is the actual idea of having, whether it like be um, an NFT, obviously for the ownership of factor, like I think that would be the most valuable, especially for people for web two gamers, at least just because everyone is saying like, we need to bring, you know, mainstream gamers into like web three gaming and um, like show them that this is more about and I think that will be the most value for most of these guys for the for the ownership app, but factor just because yep. playing a game and then when a new one comes out, like I've given this analogy too many times, but I'll do it again. Like with FIFA, FIFA, people always buy like people spend a lot of money on their games to like <clears throat> build their teams for their characters or their players <laughs> characters, um, and then they end up getting like the new every year there's a new one right and then they can't really transfer that information or data or whatever it is like they can't transfer it over so they just end up starting all over again and i think for certain gamers that aspect will be the most valuable to them if if you know if it's implemented correctly um but yeah what's your take on that do you think that it's more like we should be bringing web3 to mainstream gamers or bringing the you know gamers into web3 wait yeah. 
Yeah, I, I get what you mean. I mean, yeah. it, it, the thing to web two gamers and look, we we when we talking to press and gaming press that we the headline is not like we're a web three game. We're a game. We're fun, and we have web three elements in there to empower our players if they choose to try them out and use them. Right. right? And the thing is, is like when you say ownership, which seems to be the big tent pole to the space is leading on to a web two gamer, they're not going to really understand what that means without explanation. Right. It's like, a, yeah. Oh, you can own this. Well, what have I been doing for the last 10 years when I bought this in the game? Right. But once you explain it to them, which is going to take time, people don't like to read, right? Or hear, we know this in games through tutorials and analytics. And so, but once they understand the value of ownership and, and to us, and this is something I, again, I've said a lot, so I'll, I'll do it here again, but like, it's the value proposition that you're offering to the common person, as we say in America, as I learned in journalism school, Joe Sixpack, right? They don't yeah. care about decentralization and and under like l1 and these underlying blockchain concepts that some we do right we're in the bubble we we're we're the ones pushing the future and people are in the space but like to them you know why did free to play take off it was free it was a good mm -hmm. deal for people and to us like you're saying why do i want to own an asset well one i'm actually now there's, I can extract value. There's not just money in, there's money coming out. Cause I have an asset that I can eventually sell or use in other places. And for us, and this is back to what I said, for our vision is, and this will become more apparent and a better value over time is we're going to make a suite of games. So like you're saying, you own this NFT, this digital collectible character in our game, you're automatically unlocking it in that game and in our future game. So it's, it's a huge, like, Pay a little more upfront, and you're getting this huge value savings for people. And and in the game we're making, I mean, you said it. You literally dictated our business plan. It's like, <laughs> it's like we're about we're about to do this, right? Like as we go into open beta, we've given everyone everything right now to play with all the assets. We're about to move into open beta. We're taking everything away, right? So you'll start with your base set of champions, and you'll have to play and progress and move up the ranks. But if you own one of our nfts that you got through magic eden or through owning a mojo you'll instantly have those characters unlocked to play with so that's like one benefit and then there's all kinds of other in-game benefits to owning them and outside the game etc so yeah it, it's people, sorry well people who didn't initially have them who started off with them will they still be able to eventually get that yes. same value yes that's actually our plan uh for the masses to to sort of let them unlock the assets in the game and then as they play with them over time and hit certain goals now they sort of have the ability to to mint it essentially to to turn into a digital collectible okay that's very good well that, that that'll be very important because i think another thing is obviously the extra benefits that the holder yeah. said no i mean it, it has to yeah and this has to be explained to players you know and and sort of just like free to play, we've seen this in where there's a conversion, right? Just to get them to buy something. Well, we have to convert them to web three and explain to them what that even really means. Cause, cause most people really don't have any idea about this, you know, you, but they don't like to be told that they don't have any idea. No, 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 exactly. We, we need to educate them. Yeah. And, and have, doing it. Yeah. And again, I, I don't, like at least our goal is not to be as pushy as sort of the first wave of free to play games and sort of have it there for people who want to make that jump. Right. And, and you have to at least, you know, tell them about the, the positive benefits of this space to, to excite them and want them to learn more and what's in it for them really. Cause that's, that's going to be important. Yeah, that makes, yeah, that's absolutely spot on. Um, so with that all being said, what are you most excited about in the gaming space at the moment and over the next, I'd say, until the end of this year? Oh, man. Uh, I would say, I mean, there's a very exciting, interesting time in this, you know, what we'll call space, Web3 gaming. And because, you know, one thing about this space is it's really different from past paradigm shifts in gaming. 
which I like to point out, because in all of those, at least in my memory, which I lived through many of, enough the great hairs to show it, that there's always like one or two shining beacon examples that sort of prove the model out. And then everyone would basically copy that and iterate on it, whether it was mm -hmm. Farmville or Clash of Clans or Angry Birds before that, you know, like there's always something here is a little different because we had Axie and I'm not like an Axie hater, but like we all know what happened. Like, mm -hmm. and so we thought like Axie was that. And then I was like, oops, no, it's not. So what's, I really think, and they're figuring it out too. And I think doing amazing things. I'm, I'm actually a big fan, but I think over the next six to 12 months, that's what excites me is like, we're going to see the dominant patterns emerge. And we're also, and I think they're going to come from companies like us and others that we're tight with who are really bringing their games out to the masses. There's, there's only really a handful of companies who are sort of, you know, leaving the tent and going out to the, the sort of mainstream we've all been in this little club you know in a rock concert or whatever yeah. now we're like about to go out to a giant arena right and it's like a whole different world and so i think that's really exciting just to what's gonna work and what's not gonna work and we're definitely gonna see both i'm sure we are uh, um and, and what about for for planet mojo and mojo yeah, yeah i mean it, bringing this game to mobile, you know, and some really the unbelievable, exciting opportunities we have as that happens and with partners and others and um, fine tuning the game, adding more to it, beginning work on our, our land gameplay is actually 75% done, but we really wanted to focus on Mojo Melee and get it out of a great game, not make three half unfinished games, you know, but yeah. that's coming up. Um, That'll deliver on the promise of the NFT interoperability for people who, with their mojos and other characters and, you know, starting work on our next game and sort of building out this ecosystem. Yeah, there's, there's too much to be excited about. <laughs> You've been very busy, I'm sure, um, with the with building everything and planning all of this. How and how's it been for for you guys in the last Maybe we won't talk too much about the mirror market. Let's look into the positive things for now. Let's look I mean, forward. For us, luckily, you know, we, we were able to raise money at the beginning of this, so it hasn't affected us terribly. We really just kept our heads down, which everyone told us that's what you do in bear markets, right? You build, and we are builders. And so, um, yeah, for us and our team, um, luckily we've made good decisions in terms of, where our funds are stored or, or lucky ones. Cause no one could predict what happens. And, um, but yeah, I, I think for us, it's just been heads down and building this thing and trying to like get the game out. Cause there is sort of a, you know, somewhat of a race to get these things out and you know, out there and bring it to, there is advantages and disadvantages to, to being early. Um, but we're willing to take those, take those risks. Okay. Yeah, but it's good. I feel like you guys are on the right track. The game looks really good. the <clears throat> the the quality The quality looks insane. So I'm very excited to see that. Thank you. I, and my art director and the whole art team. I'll give credit to them. They thank you too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you're welcome. Um, but no, thank you so much, um, Mike. This has been this has been really great. Yeah. No. Thanks for having me. Cool. It's always fun to talk about this stuff and you know, scary that it's all recorded so people can look at it in six to 12 months and see if any of these things we say are, will even come true. Yeah. So, <laughs> Well, they'll come back. They'll, they'll know who to find, you know, yeah. not me. Hopefully a few of them are right. We'll see. No, I'm sure you guys will smash it. Um, I'm excited to see what it will look like when it goes mobile. I'll be waiting for that because I'm that audience. Yeah. It's real soon and people are interested. You know, you can come to you our have, website. I know. Do you have like a date? Uh, I don't have a date, but like we're talking like this quarter, obviously. For sure. For quarter, sure. But, yeah. And um, yeah, exactly. This quarter. I was like, wait, what are we recording? Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, pe people should pay attention. We have some big announcements coming up very soon is going to be the web open beta and then Android private. So people who want to sign up, 
uh, we're looking for gamers who want to play. Mike, before we go, I have just one last question. What what would, um, in your own words, what is Web3 Gaming to you? Yeah, I mean, the thing I think I've realized is if you boil it down to one word, it's about empowerment. It's about empowerment for us as developers, and it empowers the community, right, and players. And if you think about sort of the gaming and where it's gone the last decade, community has really become a big thing in gaming. It can really make or break games. And to me, Web3 is the evolution of community because now they have a stake. They're owning part of the game and in our project and others, they have a say in the project's future direction. So I think it's creating hopefully this new economy where the players are empowering us. We're empower it's empowering us to create new amazing things for them. And we can sort of have our own independent ecosystem that, you know, can sort of shift the power balance in gaming, which which is really needed. So it's it's huge for independent gaming, I think, and communities. Yeah, those are some very, very good points to close with. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate taking the time to to join us here. It was fun. Thanks for having me. Great catching up and see you again sometime. Thanks so much for watching. Um, if you guys have watched it till the end, I appreciate you. Please like, comment, and subscribe and let us know what you'd like to see. Um, in the meantime, please go ahead and feel free to watch any of the other episodes. Is that good? I can spread it out. <laughs>